Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Uh, tonight we're going to consume a rest service with KTOR. That means that we have one endpoint that will consume another endpoint with the HTTP client, which is one of the features that we can install uh, in, 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 on, on the KTOR application. If you're a Java developer, listen to this. this. It's very, very powerful. It's a cool server and Kotlin is almost like Java, just where it actually makes sense. So uh, let's get started. So first of all, I'm going to create a new project with IntelliJ. I have the KTOR plugin installed, so I can press this on the left side. I will tick off uh, something called uh, content negotiation. That means that then we can return uh, objects and then it will be serialized into uh, JSON automatically. I'm using JSON and I need to tick off the content negotiation. I also want to make sure that I have routing enabled. And now comes to the thing that we're going to look at tonight. This is the HTTP client engine right here. And it's not enough just to check off the HTTP client engine because this is just the framework around it. We need some kind of engine to run inside. And here we have some, uh, uh, some options. We have Apache, which supports HTTP 1 and 2. We have CIO, which only supports uh, HTTP 1. Then we have Jetty, which only supports HTTP 2. And that is why I prefer usually to, to use Apache, the Apache HTTP client engine. Um, if you if you just take off one, then you actually don't need to say which engine you're using when you are configuring the feature, because the cater will figure this out by itself. It will look on a class path. It will use something called the service loader, and then it will actually figure out, oh, okay, it's Apache, which we have on, in the dependencies, and that's why that's what we want to use. Then we have something that we will dig into another day. That is the mock HTTP client engine. That is very, very good for testing. We can use that to say, when we try to reach this endpoint, then we want this result, and it's uh, so it's very good for mocking uh, for mocking client uh, for client requests to services that we that that are not there right now. Uh, another thing we want to enable because this uh, if if we only have the HTTP client and the Apache engine, then we can just get text back and byte arrays back. But we would actually like to get uh, to get it deserialized into objects instead. It's much, uh, it's, of course, it's much uh, more convenient for us because we, uh, yeah, we are dealing with an object-oriented uh, world, of course. So tick off JSON serialization for HTTP client. We do not need uh, to, 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 to choose which uh, serialization uh, mechanism we are going to use uh, right now because we have only ticked off uh, JSON at the content negotiation, so that will also be used for the client. And that is um, important to know, of course. If you want to use Jackson for the client, then you also need to check off Jackson over here, because then we get the dependency included. Let me press next. And next. And let us give it a good name, KTOR. And then we name this uh, HTTP client alien demo. We're going to create an alien tonight, I guess. So yes, use this window. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Give me my project. There you are. And again, if you're a Java developer, do not be spooked. It is, uh, it is. It, Kotlin is so cool, but of course, it's a bit. Uh, it looks a bit weird when you are, when, yeah, when, when when you just get started with it. But uh, after some time, you can really see that it uh, makes you much more um, productive, and it also it's also much more fun to write. Uh, so, and also easier to read. I would, I would say. Uh, here we have the content negotiation that is for our, uh, for our server. When we, when, when we respond something from uh, in our server, then we're using uh, JSON. Then another thing, this is the client. This is what we call third-party uh, servers. So that means that when we're consuming a service, then we are using the JSON serializer. And as an example, we could have run this code if we want to. This is just example code. I'm going to leave that for now. I'm going to delete this code right here. And right now, look here, we have a data class already. Let us create an alien here, and we want the alien to have a name. And it should also have should have a height and weight. It, it always hurts when I have to give up this information. Uh, mostly the weight, of course, uh, weights like this. And it could be floats, floats. And we want the float also here. So this is the data class. If you're a Java developer, you'll probably have have annotated your class with add data from Lombok instead. 
Um, so, but this is this is actually a part of the Kotlin language. It's very, very cool. So here we have a data class. It has these fields that we have right here. These will be generated automatically. We will get auto string. We will get the equals method generated automatically. So we are very, very happy because we are using Kata and Kotlin. I'm going to leave the default uh, route. This is called a route. It's an endpoint. So, so, but it, uh, this is a called route. So we are going to leave the default route because then I, when I start up the server, then I can see that everything actually works as it should because we get the hello world message printed in our browser or in our curl script. I want to create this is off this 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 imitates a third party service. So this is my third party service. Uh, third party service. So this is my third party service and what, what can it generate? It can it can generate an alien. Let us respond an alien. Instead of respond text, then we just respond and then we want to respond an instance of the alien and we're just going to create an alien. Let us create Mike. Mike is the alien tonight. And then we create a height. It's one dot nine something like that. Then we have the weight. It varies a lot. But it is unfortunately on the wrong side of a hundred kilogram. So I guess three digits are cool. At least that's what I have right here. Let me just, okay, I'll just write something that is kind of close. Uh, I don't think it's that much. Let's write 102 instead. <clears throat> um, which, of course, is something we need to do something about. I know, I know, I know. But uh, so that is the third party service. We will get an alien returned. Now let us try to get, now let us try to create another service that actually consumes this third party service. Get, and then we like consume uh, service. So. And here we're going to use the client and then we want to get something and we want to get the third HTTP. Now we need to uh, enter the whole URL, including the protocol. Localhost port 8080 because we're actually calling out in the world. We don't know that it's actually the same server as, as localhost. It could also be just some domain. It usually is a, it's just a domain, right? So, and then we have the third party service like this. And on the get, we can actually apply a generic right here. So that means that I can actually write uh, alien, alien like this. That means that then, um, then, we, then uh, Kato will try to use the JSON serializer to actually deserialize it into an object. So let us write alien like this equals. If I if I wrote string here, then I would just get a string. Then I would just get the JSON string returned instead. And then we uh, then we don't need the the JSON uh, the JSON feature which we have installed right here. I'll just double click it. And let me just from let me just move myself to the other corner so I don't take up all the space like that. So here we have the alien, and I want to respond that alien. So, but maybe we should manipulate, or should we create a new alien from that? Maybe this is, has been, now I've been on a diet, so this is a diet version. Equals alien, and we'll take the same name as we got right there, and we will take the same height, height, and then the weight we will just, uh, let us uh, let us slim me down a little bit. Wait, we will multiply this by with zero point eight. So then we actually uh, then we treat the alien and then we create a new alien and then we respond that uh, yeah the, the slimmer version of me called dot respond diet like this. So this is me on diet. That's it. Let us try to start the application and see if we made any else. Of course, now we cannot see the log. That okay, I'm not I'm not shading for that much. Okay, let me just start our browser, and let me go to consume service. Here, get Mike, and you can see here the weight is only 81.6 kilograms. I'm very happy, and this is the raw data. This is the JSON, and the reason why I can see this is because I have a plugin installed in my in my browser in my uh, Firefox browser. Here we can see the header. This is the header, which is automatically created. Connection keep alive, a content length of uh, 43, and that it's the type is application JSON. And this is actually what triggers the plugin and now shows it like JSON instead of just a string. Very, very cool. And that is just what I wanted to show you, actually.
Um, there's not much else to say that we could actually leave out. Let us try to leave out the engine because the service loader should actually be able to find out that it's actually uh, that it's Apache, which is on the class path uh, and in the dependencies. If we look at the dependencies right here, then we can see we have the the client core, which is right there, and we're using the JVM that's right there. Uh, the reason why we have this line here is because it's actually also possible to use uh, uh, it, it, yeah, Kato is used a lot in, on native systems like uh, iOS and Android and then uh, then there are actually some other engines which need to be statically linked uh, or in a, in a static, static uh, linkage um, but I'm not an expert on that so let me not, not say anything else about that but we have the Apache when we're using JVM then we have the Apache right here this is Apache engine and this is what the service loader should find now that we have removed the, the arguments then we want the JSON feature that has been added right there. And we want to use JSON as the JSON features engine. So that there, uh, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of engines and dependencies. The, the short thing is that uh, I just deleted uh, Apache right here. Let us see if our application still works. That is actually the, the short story, right? So I'll go back to my browser, press refresh, consume service. Yes, it still works. So that means that the service loader in Kato has helped us out and actually found out, okay, the smart guy, uh, the smart efficient guy that writes Kotlin instead of Java, he actually, he wants to use Apache because I can see that it's on the class path, it's in dependencies. Um, so that is of course what he, that, that is of course the engine that he wants to use. If there were multiple engines uh, added, then uh, the service loader would actually sort them alphabetically or alphabetical, a sort of alphabetical, and then um, and then we'll take the first one. So then again, Apache will be would be chosen if Apache was added, of course. But that's actually it. Thank you very much for watching. If you are a Java developer, um, read some Kotlin, read up on some Kotlin. It is very very interesting, and Kato is very cool. I have, of course I also uh, I really like uh, Java. Of course I also like I like Spring Boot. But um, I also uh, Kotlin and Kato. They're just it's just very very. It just feels uh, lightweight and it's very. You don't you don't need to write a lot to, uh, yeah, to do what you want to write um, or to, to what you want to do. So that is the cool thing. Thank you very much. Have a great evening. I hope to see you again soon. Bye bye.